sponsored by tenants who are doing their bit for Scottish football this evening. Tenant Ice Park then, the home of Dundee United, who at their best can beat the best. Again, well, uh, there can't be too many people in and around Dundee tonight unaware of this tie. The fifth time in as many seasons that these two clubs have met. Wonderful atmosphere inside the ground, I must say. And I know a lot of Scots and maybe some banked up on the terracing there have been enjoying the FA Cup football that we've had on the Sports Channel recently. Well, tonight it's England's turn to enjoy an evening of Scottish hospitality. And uh, what a match that we have in prospect tonight as well. The Scottish Cup record of these two sides. 16 times they've met. Dundee United have won six of them, four of those in the last four years to improve on their record. Dundee have won three, and there have been seven draws, which tells us what? Well, maybe that we're in for a replay tonight. Well, we've shown you Tannadice Street. We've shown you in and around the ground here at Tannadice Park. Let's have a closer look at the two clubs in the company of one of United's oldest boys. McLeod with a corner. Right-footed, putting it across. Ready down into the net, and it's a goal. Andy Gray's 25th goal of the season. Well, this is where I started my career at the age of 17. That was way back in 1973. And amazingly, the man who signed me then is still manager of Dundee United. Now, as well as being Britain's longest serving manager, he's also chairman. And his single-minded obsession with Dundee United has transformed this club from a small provincial outfit into a major force in Scottish football, which has won the league, the League Cup, and which reached the final of the UEFA Cup in 1987. But there's one thing which has eluded Jim McLean, and that's the Scottish Cup, despite reaching the final five times. I remember you saying to a very young Andy Gray many years ago, never be happy or never be satisfied with what you achieve in the game. And I don't think Jim McLean will be satisfied until his name's on that Scottish Cup. Well, obviously, I think there's always something more to look for. And at the moment, uh, it is the most important thing in my uh, foreseeable future because it is the next game. And uh, that's as far as it goes. But it would be nice for Dundee United to finish up the season with a trophy, but we must improve our performances, in particular the consistency of performance, to have any chance of winning uh, the Scottish Cup. But we've got a difficult enough uh, task on our plate at the moment with the Dundee game. I was just going to say, uh, if you're going to win the Scottish Cup, you have to go over your fiercest rivals, your closest rivals. Dundee, is it going to be a typical Tayside derby? I think that uh, it will be very competitive. I think that uh, both sets of players uh, obviously know how much is at stake in the match. I don't think it will be a connoisseur's game in that uh, the ball will be getting passed about by one or other uh, of the teams out there. But I think it will be a typical cup tie and hopefully there will be a few goals in it. And uh, obviously, hopefully, there are more for Dundee United than there are uh, for uh, Dundee on the night. Across the road is Dens Park, the home of the enemy. For decades, until Jim McLean arrived at Tannadice, United had to live in the shadow of this once great club, which has produced many great players, such as Alan Gozin, Ian Ewer, Charlie Cook and Gordon Strachan. Dundee may have fallen on hard times, but they're top of the first division and favourites for promotion. Could the good times be on the way back? As an ex-Dundee player, Gordon, and a very successful and strong side, how conscious are you now as manager of the shift in power in this city? I think it's happened over a period of time, Andy, and uh, it's something that's been here now for quite considerable time. But I remember when Jim McLean went across the road, it took him a long time to shift the power away again. Uh, so it goes in swings and roundabouts. We've just got to hope that our time will come again. In Scottish football terms, would it be fair to describe Dundee as a sleeping giant? It's been called that for a long time. Uh, it seems to be dormant, to be honest, at the moment. And uh, 
it's really time that we come back again into the fore and only by getting young players through the ranks and being successful will it happen. It's certainly been a successful season league-wise, Gordon, running along at the top of the first division very nicely. What were your thoughts when you came out of the heart with your local rivals? Uh, well, to be honest, uh, we were expecting it from the first <laughs> round, so it never came as a shock. Uh, it's five years on the trot now, so it's something that's become tradition, I think. Will you be able to use this game, do you think, as a guide to how far this young team has come? That's a possibility. Right just now, we're looking forward, uh, obviously, to our league games, and the cup comes round as a bonus. And when the cup comes round, to be fair to the players, they can relax and go out and give it everything they've got. And if it's successful, it's successful. And if it isn't, well, it's not the end of the world for us. Do I get a little hint there that Gordon Wallace would sacrifice a cup run, even defeat from local rivals, if it meant promotion at the end of the Andy, season? I wouldn't sacrifice <laughs> any, and you know that. Uh, no, I know. I'd like to win every game. When the cup comes round, it becomes the most important game of the season, and that's the way it'll be. Gordon Wallace, things boiling up quite nicely here. I'm told the cry on the terrace behind me used to be, who's that boy with the long blonde hair? Andy, Andy. Well, the passing years have meant that Gray doesn't need the attentions of a hairdresser to the same extent that he used to. We'll hear from him after this break. Welcome back to Tanner Dice. We're here for the Tayside derby between United and Dundee for a place in the Scottish Cup semi-finals. We've shown you the geography in these parts, the two clubs separated by, well, literally a few hundred yards. They're a lot closer in many other respects, a fact perhaps best illustrated by the two managers. Uh, Gordon Wallace of Dundee, who scored the winner for United in the 73 League Cup final, a one a, 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 for Dundee, rather, I should say, in a 1-0 win over Celtic. He played for United, was a United coach under Jim McLean there on the right-hand side before walking out up the road to take over at Dens Park in 1989. And Jim, an ex-Dundee player, an ex-Dundee coach, in charge at United for the past 20 years. He is now the longest-serving manager anywhere in Britain. Four league meetings between them last year when Dundee were relegated from the Premier Division. United didn't win any of them. There were two draws and two wins for Dundee, the last of them coming very nearly a year ago, March 1990. Long and deep, that's a very good ball indeed, does a great start. Connolly puts it away, 1-0. And it's eight, look at this, oh dear dear, here's a great chance, that's equaliser, yes, right. Shannon. What he's done it, that is accuracy. Well, the only Tayside derby this year. The ground, if we go outside and have a look round, is as full as it has been, I would have thought, for one of these derby games in a few years. Banked away on the far side there, the travelling support who have come a few hundred yards down the road. The only team I've ever seen walk to an away match. Saw Dundee arriving a little earlier tonight. Great atmosphere in here. Let's join our commentary team, Andy Gray, of course, who knows these parts well, and Jock Brown. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, it's a tremendous atmosphere inside Tanadice, and for Andy Gray, a new experience, because he's on this gantry, I think, for the first time, having played in these matches many times. Is this how you recall the atmosphere, Andy? Yeah, just about right, Jock, now, as the crowd builds up. And you're right, I've been to many parts of this ground, but never up here beside you. Um, it is wonderful to see the ground packed the way it is tonight. I wonder if it's because this is the only Tayside derby of the year. They've not had to come four, five, six times as they had to to come and watch these two sides last year. Dundee, this is it, the only game this season, and this is a replay, that we'll see the two Dundee teams together. And I think that's part of the reason why we've got a full house tonight. These Dundee supporters, of course, normally were in the majority in this city in the historical past, but of course in these recent years with Dundee Ray doing so well, it's all changed. But in the Cup, in the last four years, we've had matches between Dundee United and Dundee. And United last season, getting through after a replay, they haven't lost any of these matches in the last four seasons. And that's a very remarkable record in any kind of derby football. So Dundee United coming out to a tremendous welcome. And wait for the roar for the Dundee players.
for the first coming from the corner of the pitch where the dressing rooms are situated. And so very interesting team changes. Only one made by Dundee United in the team which beats St. Merlin on Saturday. 19-year-old Duncan Ferguson has recovered from a groin injury and he's preferred to Hamish French to partner Darren Jackson up front. Jackson, the leading goal scorer for Dundee United this season with 16 goals. The midfield powerhouse is Jim McAnally, signed in May 1986 from Coventry City. And he was signed exactly the same day as Dave Bowman, who came from Coventry with him at £150,000 deal. The Dundee manager, Gordon Wallace, has made one or two changes. He's reacted to that home defeat against Brecon on Saturday by leaving out Colin West and Joe McBride. Albert Craig and Sean McSkimming are the replacements, and that suggests a more cautious approach. Billy Dodds, though, is the main striking threat. The ex-Chelsea player has scored 17 times this season for Dundee. Willie Jimmison was signed to the centre-half, although he started his career as a striker with Hibernian. And Tom Carson, a very experienced goalkeeper, although he's taken some time to force his way into the Dundee league side on a regular basis, costing £50,000 from Dumbarton in 1984. And a very experienced FIFA official, it's George Smith from Edinburgh, who's handled three Scottish Cup finals in the last decade and ideally suited to a match of this tension. For scarcely room to breathe inside Tanadice. The anticipation mounting as the teams line up for the start of the only derby game of this season. Dundee in their familiar navy blue shirts, white shorts and the blue and white stockings against the tangerines of Dundee United Lieutenant Scottish Cup quarter-final gets underway with Dundee kicking off and it will be very interesting indeed to see what tactical ploys are taken up by Gordon Wallace, the Dundee manager in particular coming into this match as something of underdogs but with a very youthful midfield apart from Gordon Chisholm who will play right in the middle of the field former Sunderland and Hibernian player There's Albert Craig, drafted back into the side. His experience will be valuable tonight. And this young Dundee side, there's Billy Dodds. Played forward by Craig. And escorted back by Morris Malpass. It looks as though Albert Craig will join Billy Dodds up front for Dundee. Yeah, that was the one question we had on the Dundee side, was would number nine Albert Craig play up front? It certainly looks as if he's going to do that. There may be some confusion about how the teams are going to line up, Jock, but conditions here, absolutely perfect at Tanadice and Dundee tonight. Very little wind. The playing surface is well nigh perfect. It's got a little bit of give in it, which is just exactly what players like, and it's very, very flat. So no excuse for the conditions. They are perfect. So these opening exchanges could have a vital bearing in the outcome of this tie. Jim McAnally will be doing all he can to... Force United forward, down goes Dodds, the tackle came from Morris Malpass. The United skipper making an early impression on the young Dundee striker. Stephen Frail will take this free kick. Played away there well by Duncan Ferguson, back helping in defence. United have a habit of pulling everyone back when they're defending in that position. There's John O'Neill, followed all the way by Rab Shannon, the Dundee left back. I've often wondered about that. You mentioned Dundee United pulling everyone back, Jock. I always think that invites pressure on you. When you clear the ball as Dundee United did, and if you have no one up front, then you can't relieve any pressure on yourselves. I've always found that one a bit strange. So Frail battling in the middle of the field with McKinnon. A hefty challenge by Jimison, but it's Ferguson who's penalised for lifting his boots too high. 
It's a typical derby start in a football match, isn't it? 100 mile an hour, tackles flying in. Fergus made his debut as a substitute against Rangers in November. And looked extremely confident in that match. For one so young. So John Clark, a powerhouse in defence for Dundee United. The key man in their UEFA Cup run in 1987. Came off the head of Krivakovic. Just looking at United's formation, Jock. Sometimes they do use John Clark and Krivakovic as, as markers with Freddie van der Hoorn as a sweeper and push Morris Malpass forward. But it looks as if they're starting with a flat back four as well. With John Clark playing as in the natural right back position, Morris Malpass left back. So it looks like we've got two teams playing natural 4 4 twos. Certainly will be very difficult for either manager to surprise the other. John Clark is a very dangerous figure inside that Dundee box. Headed away was by Craig. Here's Dave Bowman. Led away by Jimison. Good pass from Dodds just behind Albert Craig. Calm play there by Dinny. So Frail couldn't reach that in time. The throw goes to United. So Dundee operating with two 20-year-olds and a 21-year-old in midfield beside Gordon Chisholm. So this will be a major test for these young men. Jackson returning it to McKinnon. Left by Bowman for John Clark. Well, his shooting power is renowned. He has incredible power from these positions outside the penalty box. Oh, yes, there's no question that John Clark is certainly capable. And this is what Dundee will have to be careful of, that they don't drop too far back and allow someone with the power of John Clark into that kind of range. Kovacovic getting the better of Dodds in the air. Here's Craig. Frail's header looking for Dodds. Stephen Frail coming forward from his right midfield position to good effect. Halted there by Jackson. Bowman collided there with Jackson. And a calm piece of defending by Alan Dinney, former party thistle player. May have collided there, Jock, but that's the one thing you want to see as a manager. Both players at least showing that they want the ball, and neither of them leaving it, or neither both of them not leaving it. Ahead of by Clark, Shannon finds the mix skimming. Good play from Bowman. Lovovic has Malpass free on the left. This is Ray McKinnon. Quite enough space there for Duncan Ferguson. Frail's header, well controlled by Craig. This is Dodds escaping that very fast tackle from Bowman. There's McInally. Well, the Dundee striker certainly hustling the United defenders. Another bit forced to hurry. Malpass making space for himself. Jackson makes a run through the inside left channel. Closely marked by Jimison. I think that's the secret for Dundee's success that they're going to have it tonight, Jock, and that they must put United players under pressure all over the pitch. I think, to be fair, United have the better team on paper, so when you're, you're facing something like that, you have to put them under pressure and really make them work for it. And I think that's Dundee's way to success tonight. Well, off from Ferguson goes wrong. The recovery made by McInally. Well, these are two very tough customers on the United midfield. It's all getting brought out there. McAnally and Bowman, the two central midfield players for United, going in very fiercely indeed. But at the end of the day, they have won the free kick. Dave Bowman being calmed down by his skipper, Morris Malpass. 
I, don't, I tell you, I envy George Smith here. How we, can, how we can give a decision out of this as to which way that one goes, Jock, is beyond me. It shows that both sets of players are really committed to this game tonight. And none more so than Dave Bowman and Jim McAnally, his midfield partner. Pevagovic. Here's O'Neill. The ball is out of play for a Dundee throw. Well, there's going to be some very interesting individual confrontations in this match. In the middle of the field, the youth of McMartin for Dundee, matched by the experience of Chisholm there, number four, directly opposed by McInally and Bowman. Oh, well, maybe a difficult night for George Smith, the referee. You mentioned the experience of David Bowman and Jim McInally. It's the one thing that does surprise you about United's side tonight. Jim McLean is renowned for bringing teenagers, young players into his side. It is noticeable and very strange to see only two teenagers in his side tonight. And these teenagers being Duncan Ferguson and John O'Neill. Although Ray McKinnon almost qualifies. Just turned 20. And headed by Jimison. Here's Dodds. The run made by McSkimming on the left. John Clark going across. Of the life, Clark as a striker at Tannadice and moved back to centre half and then has proved his versatility, winning a number two for United. It's McAnally looking for Jackson. Frave was there first. There's Van der Horn and Malpass. Jemison cost £125,000 from Hamilton Ackes a year ago. Team very close to your heart as well, Jock Hamilton. Didn't think you'd notice that, Andy. Here's Frail. Now McInally. This is Bowman. John O'Neill on the right flank. quite what he intended I think but it almost caused problems there for Tom Carson John John O'Neill another in the tradition of tricky Scottish wingers yeah I think it just sits up Jock he, he does everything right he looks up he just sits up from there I tell you what Tom Carson was more confident than I was that that was going over the crossbar Swept forward by Chisholm, the willing figure of Dodds chases. Van der Hoorn is there first. Well taken down by O'Neill, the support is provided by Clark. Good play by Jimison. Here's Dinny. Malpass was very swiftly in with that challenge. Well, it's been a very hectic opening spell, but Dundee have acquitted themselves very well so far. Gordon Wallace will be delighted, but it's the type of game that if your Gordon Wallace in the second division at the top of the league, Jock, you would want your team to play just to give them a little breather away from it. What better game could you have arranged than a cup tie, quarter final against your local rivals? The only time they'll probably play this year. We wonder if we say to his players, take the pressure off, go and play, go and express yourself, and above all, enjoy it. Dundee playing though with the handicap of Keith Wright out through suspension. Major attacking threat for the last five seasons at Dens Park. Attracting a lot of transfer interest, but forced to sit this one out. There's the Dundee bench, Gordon Wallace at the far end there with John Blackley beside him, his assistant. Billy Kirkwood also the coach who was formerly with Dundee United. So Denny's free kick. Well won by Ferguson. Jackson been left upfield by United. 
Oh, the free kick given against Darren Jackson. But backing into his marker. Try to gain an extra yard. Jackson clearly doesn't agree with that decision by referee Smith. Played in by Shannon. The clearance in the end by Bowman, but Billy Dodds was flagged offside. Billy has made an excellent impact at Dens Park this season. Shannon's header gives United the throw. So the United manager Jim McLean did suggest before the match they didn't expect it to be a fluent passing game. Certainly hasn't turned out that way so far. There's a foul at the edge of the penalty area. It was Diddy's challenge on Duncan Ferguson. This young man does seem to have an excellent temperament for the game. Look at the way he takes this with confidence. And very highly rated with his manager. I know he's delighted it to be able to call him back into the side job. Very highly rated with Jim McLean. But let me tell you something. Jim McLean says it's not going to be a passing game. You can bet your life he'll want his side to pass it about. So a free kick at an angle here for United. They're dead ball experts. Are right footed players though, and John Clark, who may deliver a cross from here or try that shot against the wall. Not ideally set up for a left footed, for a right footed player, rather. There's Van der Hans header. There's Krivogovic losing out to Frail, winning it back for Bowman. Killers run from Dave Bowman, but it's retrieved by McKinnon. McKinnon sent spinning there after releasing the pass by Albert Craig. Craig again making his presence felt with that challenge on Vanderhaan. I'd always feel if, if I was a striker, Jock, that Freddie Vanderhaan would give you a chance, you know. He does like to play the ball out of defence, he does like to look for passes, even when he's under pressure. And as a striker, you would always just be looking for him to make that little error. Just like Albert Craig was looking for there and almost got away with it. Sean McSkimming showing good pace there on the flank. Confident play by the youngster. John Clark, his opponent is no slouch. Oh, that's great play by Jackson. McAnally held to the cross, but Frail showing excellent anticipation here and testing the pace of Malpass. Well, Malpass unhappy about the fact that he thought he was pushed by Frail. There's McMartin playing it in. There's a chance for United handball, surely. It comes off the crossbar, but the whistle is gone. It was handball by Albert Craig. But this was an undoubted chance for Dundee. Well, I'm not really sure what Albert Craig is trying to do in bringing it down in there, Jock. It's a perfect cross just for Albert Craig to put his head on it and just give Dundee the lead. But he decides to try and bring it down. Could only use his arm. And the linesman was quite right in flagging. It was a handball. Well, Albert Craig certainly has been around. He had a spell with Newcastle United after an excellent scoring spell with Hamilton. So, a bit of respite there for Alan Main. Uh, the ball has mysteriously appeared from the terrace behind Alan Main. So, one ball is returned to the bench. But Dundee may live to regret missing that opportunity. The United really have not yet settled into their smooth path of the play as yet that's a tribute to the determined efforts of Dundee as young Grant McMartin Denny with a free kick 
Head flick on by Craig. There's John Clark. McKinnon did well in the air. Flag is up for offset against Billy Dodge. Well, that looked to be a very tight decision. Dodge is shaking his head there. The linesman, Hugh McHenry from Glenrothes. It didn't look as though Dodge may have been in line, which would this season put him on side. Yeah, I think the new rule is taking some time for linesmen to get in touch with the new rule as well, Jock. And they do make the occasional mistake. I like Billy Dodge in a case there for glaring at the linesman. Well, Jimison is still a stalwart in defence. Uh, Dodds is a live wire up front. John O'Neill helps it on. Shannon playing into space beyond John Clark. Albert Craig makes the run. Here's Mick Skimming. Well, John O'Neill showing another aspect of his talents, making a very tough tackle there, but he lost the throwing decision. Here's Dodds. Clark goes sliding in. Well, he seemed to play the ball. That's what John Clark is suggesting to referee George Smith. But the referee will have a war with the big defender. Well, my first impressions are he's won the ball, Jock, and seeing it again, I'm not going to change that. I mean, I thought that was a good tackle. I think perhaps the crowd helped Billy Dodge's cause there on that far side. Well, right in front of the Dundee fans, that incident. So Sean McSkimming will take this free kick. Jimmis is looking for space inside the box. It's away by Malpass. Denny making a very good effort from long range. Well, that was well struck indeed by Alan Denny. He's scored twice this season from his fullback position. Well, we've talked about John Clark's power, but look at this for a strike from Alan Denny. That's very, very close. There really is a confidence about Dundee at the moment, Jock. The chance that Albert Craig missed has given them a, a real lift, and there's a real bounce to their game just now. They really are on the up. Led across there by McAnally for O'Neill. Here's Jim McAnally. Well, I regret not taking that on the run. He had space to go forward into, but it's Dundee on the break. Shaping up to be a superb cup tie. Craig running straight into the very tough figure of Mio Drag Krivanovic, and it's a free kick against Albert Craig for a bit of elbow work there on the Yugoslav International. So a free kick to United. But Tanadai is savouring yet another magnificent derby occasion. Packed terraces. And very evenly distributed between the two sets of supporters. There's Malpass with a header. Van der Horn's header. Back it goes from Bowman. Yeah, you talk about the pack test, it's great to see Jock, but that's the one thing that's at stake as well here in these players, but that's the pride. I mean, Dundee is a city with two teams in it. There's not another chance this year for the other team to win a game if they lose tonight, and that's why it's very important for the players and for the fans, for their team to win. The clearance came from Jimison, there's Dodds. A long pass from McSkimming, and this time there can be no argument about Craig being offside. Well, it is interesting, the United defensive formation, normally they've been playing with two markers and a sweeper, but this switch to a back four. Perhaps the intention was to push the two fullbacks well forward, expecting perhaps only Billy Dodds to play through the middle for Dundee. But it's all making for a fascinating contest. There's Bowman. Up goes Malpass. Van der Horn playing it through the middle for Jackson. Craig getting up well. Here's McAnally, a supporting player from midfield. Jackson picking out O'Neill. Sharp, incisive tackle there from Shannon. A lot of recognition at youth and under 21 level, Rab Shannon hasn't quite made the progress which was expected of him. Bowman's throw. That's John Clark, well tackled by Chisholm. Still the problems are on to the Dundee defence as Bowman sends the ball across. Reaches McKinnon, there's Jackson. 
Blackwell with a superbly controlled pass that by Ray McKinnon to Jackson setting up the chance showing amazing maturity yes he just faints as it comes over and the ball gets cleared out to the edge of the box you think that Ray McKinnon is going to have a shot when he looks he just sees him and just for a minute it opens up for Darren Jackson you know what he's trying to do he's trying to find that far corner but just doesn't get his accuracy right former Medibank Thistle and Newcastle United player looking very sharp in the early stages here's McKinnon so a direct contest there McKinnon against Frail on this near side in midfield two very promising young players now pass to the throw there's Jackson good switch of play that to Clark he has O'Neill ahead of him Angle towards Ferguson. McInerney looking for McKinnon. That's good control from McKinnon. A final left foot cross. Shannon made a good clearance there, but some fine play once more from Ray McKinnon. This young man looks very impressive on the left side of the United midfield. Yes, he does. It's really one of the few times I've seen him play myself, Jock, but I've been very impressed. But I know that there's a lot of people in England, a lot of managers that have made the trip north of the border to look at that young man. Clark easing it back. Well, Alan Main getting a long glare from his skipper, Morris Malpass. Acknowledging that with a hand wave by way of apology. Well, certainly not easy to distinguish the Premier Division side from the First Division side at this stage in the match. Play by Jackson. Bowman again has found space in midfield. Clark coming forward. There's O'Neill. Now Clark. O'Neill has Bowman inside, but that was read by Chisholm for Dundee. McAnally going surging forward. Chance set up there for John O'Neill as the deflection gives the corner kick to Dundee United. And United manufacturing something out of very little, thanks to Jim McAnally. Yes, it's his determination to win the tackle, isn't it? That gets the chance in there. Darren Jackson's awareness, and that's very close as it's deflected for a corner. So it's McKinnon's corner kick. An awkward one for Carson. A good catch in the end by Tom Carson. Yeah, just for a minute, I'm sure Tom Carson was very worried, Jock, as he goes forward and thinks it's going over him, but just gets back in time. Bowman playing it through the middle of for Ferguson. Brave relieved to see Carson arrive. Just the odd sign now that United are stepping up the pace a little. Helped on by Craig, there's Krivokovic. Very strong tackle there by McKinnon on Frail. Results in the referee's whistle and a free kick to Dundee. And young Ray McKinnon will be spoken to by referee Smith. So past the 25 minute mark now, no scoring. Diddy taking this free kick. Chisholm is the target. Beaten to that ball by Clark. And Bowman lofts the ball right out of the ground. So a bonus for any passerby. So Dave Bowman has made a very significant impact on the midfield proceedings. Clearance by McAnally, here's O'Neill, taking on McMartin. Clearance there from Cray, goes forward, there are two balls on the pitch at the moment. The original ball has been returned towards Alan Main as Duncan Ferguson goes through. 
And the tidying up work was done by Rab Shannon. Ferguson again posing problems for that Dundee defence. Yes, there are definitely signs that Dun Dundee United are beginning to take a grip on the on the game, Jock. They're starting to find their passes, they're starting to get some room, their movement's very good, and Dundee are just finding it a little bit tough to hang on in there at the moment. The bad tackle there by Chisholm. Perhaps a sign of the growing frustration in the Dundee ranks. Yeah, I think that is a sign that, that just for the last five or ten minutes, that the Dundee United have been getting the upper edge and Gordon Chisholm just losing ahead a little bit there. I think he'd been spoken to a little bit earlier from George Smith and perhaps he's taken that into consideration, Jock. So a centre-half by nature, drafted into the midfield for Dundee and the yellow card is shown. So the first booking of the match. Referee George Smith trying to ensure that things remain well under control. It's played forward by Van der Horn. Up goes Ferguson. Losing out in the jump though with Jimison. So it's a goal kick to Dundee, but they do have some thinking to do at this stage in the match, Andy, because the tide is turning a little bit with McInally and Bowman taking a grip in the middle of the field and McKinnon and O'Neill showing some skill on the flanks. Well, certainly, and as I say, Jock, I think Dundee's best bet is to, for people like Gordon Chisholm in the middle of midfield there, I know he's been booked and it's going to be difficult for him there now to put his tackles in, Jock. So there's an onus on him to get a grip and put United under pressure because that's what they did in the first 15, 20 minutes and actually got some joy. Here a chance though for Dodds, he's clear now with a great chance for Dundee! 29 minutes gone, Dundee go ahead and the scorer is Billy Dodds. Well, it's no surprise it's that young man with 17 goals to his credit already, Jock, that he's the one that's opened the scoring. It comes at a time when Dundee United are having their best spell and really a goal out of nothing. If you just look, it's a hopeful ball. This is not good defending from Freddie van der Hoorn, who gets caught on the wrong side of Billy Dodds. But what composure from the young man. If you look at it, Jock, defender should not be caught that side. That's the wrong side if you're defending. But Billy Dodds takes full advantage and makes Dundee United pay. So what a turnaround in events. Just as United appear to be growing in confidence, Billy Dodds turns the game around. And the deer ahead. And that goal, no doubt, will be worrying Jim McLean, the United manager, because Freddie van der Hoorn is usually operating in the role as sweeper behind two markers. But on that occasion, he was caught one on one with Dodds and lost out for pace. Here's McKinnon. He gave it a quick reply. United ahead of by Ferguson. It appeared to come off the post. Oh, what a magnificent reply from Dundee United. Yes, and Gordon Walsh would have been furious if they could see it. But look at the header. He knows exactly what he's doing. It's not hit the post. It's a wonderful save from Tom Carson. So here's Ray McKinnon with a corner kick for United. And the referee not happy. There's a little bit of jostling going on on the goal line. Duncan Ferguson has incurred the wrath of the referee. But they almost could committed the Cardinal sin Dundee after scoring a goal. And that's conceding one right away. Paul Sturrock, the Dundee United coach, off his seat on the bench. McKinnon's corner towards the near post, headed away firmly by Jimison. It really is vital from the Dundee point of view that they hang on grimly to this lead for the next few minutes. Carson's committed. And it comes to Krivokovic. McKinnon timing the cross. Duncan Ferguson keeps the ball in play. Stumped off the line. There's a the chance for John Clark. Looking for a penalty for handball. The referee waving aside these furious United players. And one of two skirmishes developing. Dave Bowman and Rob Shannon appear to have squared up. Well, Shannon's a bit later who's down and... Albert Craig going to administer justice of his own as far as Dave Bowman is concerned. 
Well, this driven shot from Clark appeared to strike Shannon. I'll see this again. Well, there's all sorts of confusion in here. It's Duncan Ferguson that causes it. That's a great leap as it comes down. And really, just look at that. Why did Aaron Jackson hit that then? He looks for the layoff. And look at that. You can see Rab Shannon. They're looking for handball. That's no chance of handball. It hits Rab Shannon straight on the jaw. Great leap that though by Duncan Ferguson. The clearance was by Chisholm. And as Jackson looked up, he saw Clark in space and it's straight off the face of Shannon. And I think a load on D United had the pressure on Jock. I think we all like to see when a player's been hit like that on the head these days. Referees, good experience referee from Josh Smith, not taking any chances. Rab Shannon still looks a little bit groggy. The match will be restarted by a dropped ball. Well, Albert Craig and Dave Bowman became a little bit entangled there off the ball. Some little disagreement. So Bowman using his physical attributes in the middle of the field. Good touch on the ball too, though. Handball there by Malpass. Alan Dini will take this free kick and Dundee I reckon will want to calm things down and keep the play in the United half for a few minutes. Headed by Malpass. McKinnon well challenged there by Frail. Well Dundee thinking in terms of a second before half time. There's no offside. Billy Dodge was very quick going back with the United defenders. I know what you're saying, Jock, about slowing the game down, but you know how difficult that is in Scotland. The crowd make the players play the game at a fantastic pace here, and it's going to be difficult for Dundee to slow it down, but you're right. They will want to keep it at 1-0 till half-time and just catch their breath, but Dundee United will be vitally important for them to try and get that one back, but we've certainly got a cup tie on my hands now. There's Frail, back it goes to Jimison. Frail again. Dodge setting it up for Mike Martin. A little bit ambitious, but there was a hand used by Dodge when he controlled the ball. And a look of innocence, but the free kick has been given. It's great about cup ties and, and derby matches, Jock, isn't it? That you can throw the form book out the window. I think it's one of the great things about football. And no matter, Dundee United top of the Premier League up there, third place. Dundee in the first division. But you wouldn't have thought that tonight, would you? Here's Duncan Ferguson. Well, a very important interception there by Dinny. He's brave with another clearance. Fine tackle that by Van der Hoorn. Couldn't quite get the angle on the pass right for Jackson. Well, Freddie Van der Hoorn will be very unhappy about the loss of that opening goal. Such an assured sweeper normally, but playing in a direct central defensive marking role and caught out by Dodds. And it may be, Jock, that he plays sweeper so often that he's just been not used to actually picking players up directly and that may be why he just got caught out slightly. But it's definitely on the wrong side of Billy Dodds for the goal. Malpass going in there to win the ball from Dodds and the free kick's been given to United. Dodds making a back for Malpass. So Gordon Wallace on his feet on the touchline. Ferguson did well. Jackson helping it on. For McAnally, the principal supporting midfield player for the front two. Marking is very tight indeed. Ray McKinnon invited to leave this to Dave Bowman, is capable of a long throw. Duncan Ferguson is the likely target. An acrobatic attempt there, but it's back with John O'Neill. Oh, a fine turn by O'Neill. Trying a little too much on the ball. It's played in again by Van der Hoorn. There's Ferguson getting up. 
And Stephen Quayle back, helping in defence, turning that away for the throw. United building up the pressure towards half-time. It's been a good reply from them, Jock, since the goal's gone in. If Jim McLean was looking for something, he certainly got that. They'll show a great determination to get back in the game. There's Bowman again. And a fine effort there from the edge of the penalty area from John O'Neill. Showing excellent, quick control to set himself for the shot. Yes, they're getting closer and closer. Again, it's a long throw. They've used it quite a few times tonight. And with somebody like Duncan Ferguson in there, this caused them problems. But it's very, very close from O'Neill, who's came close tw once before already tonight. So a uh, Scottish Cup newcomer, effectively, but doing extremely well on the right flank for United. Here's John Clark. Again, the high ball aimed for Ferguson. McAnally in the box, trying to get on the end of that head flick from McKinnon. Tireless player Jim McAnally. And Stephen Frail has done an excellent job for Dundee in a midfield role. And in by mile pass towards Ferguson. Well, trying one of those turns which Jim McLean coaches so well for his young strikers. And I'm sure another long throw on its way to the box. Ferguson helping out on there, the equaliser, surely it's McKinnon! A superb reply by Dundee United. So oh, what a fine reply. Well, they'd always threatened, Jock, for the last ten minutes, it's been a good reply. And once again, it's the Bowman long throw, the Ferguson flick on, and there's Ray McKinnon doing what all good midfield players should do, getting in where it hurts, and finishing very, very confidently indeed. Just the boost that United wanted before half-time. Well, what an incredible reply by Dundee United. Raymond McKinnon getting only his second goal of the season. Could scarcely have been more welcome. So the songs now coming from the Dundee United supporters. And silence at the Dundee end of the pitch. Led out there by McAnally. Turned by Crabe and John Clark appeared to react to a call there from Alan Main. Well, an excellent time for Dundee United to head back just six minutes before half time well, a goal certainly which had been threatened for some time the Dundee United impetus broken down a little by Dundee's goal from Billy Dodds but the United fans now have the chance to enjoy the occasion Wonderful to see this ground like this, Jock. Usually it's only ever like this when Rangers and Celtic visit Dundee. It's wonderful to see the two teams putting on a show like this and the fans responding. Headed on from Albert Craig asking too much of Billy Dodds. Well, the Dundee supporters a little bit deflated by that equaliser. They were hoping to get to half time with the lead intact. But United clearly had other ideas. Terraces at Tannadice. United try to come forward again. Jackson setting it up for Bowman. Here's O'Neill. Jackson didn't quite keep the ball in play. And an angry exchange there. Frail and Ferguson. Well, it really is a cup tie where tensions are running high. I think we can see from Darren Jackson's reaction that he felt he did keep that in. Joe Smith just having a quiet word. Yeah, I think he thinks he kept that in. But a great opportunity it was for John O'Neill. And he's been in that position two or three times tonight, Jock. And they'll be disappointed that he hasn't put it in an area where they could really hurt Dundee. But it's Dundee, I've got to find the answer. Sorry, Jock, now. Because Dundee United tails really are up. 
Well, Van der Horn this time making absolutely certain he wasn't caught out that time by the pace of Dodge. Well, he's inside David Dodge, uh, Billy Dodge there, Jock. Not on the outside of him as he was in the goal. And that's made all the difference in that situation there. Well, a clumsy touch there by Krivogovic giving Dundee the throw. Well, the crowd appears to sense that this is a very important phase of the match. United thinking clearly in terms of going in at half time ahead. O'Neill breaking forward. Good interception there by Van der Hong. It's significant too the way in which United have pulled the fullbacks across to provide extra cover. And then with the come forward, it's handball by Van der Hong. Opportunity for Dundee once again. And sent forward Gordon Chisholm and Willie Jimison. Shannon will take the free kick. Helped inside by Jimison for Craig. Alan Main manages a smile there as Craig tries to upset him. Yeah, I think Smith, I think he was quite happy that Freddie van der Hoorn got a good block in there. He's a long high ball, it's awkward for van der Hoorn. And it wasn't entirely convincing there, but Sean Clark is first to the ball. Forced though to concede the throw. Oh, here's Gordon Chisholm. Target there is Mick Skimming. Turned away by Clark. Alan Main showing his anguish at that decision by Clark to turn the ball away. There didn't appear to be much danger on. But there could be now from this corner kick. Jimison making for the goal line. Chisholm hovering at the edge of the penalty box. Played in by Frail. Malpass did well. So did John O'Neill. Tackle from Bowman and Frail. McMartin across to take that pass from McSkimming. Dinny forward. Here's McAnally. And Malpass goes back. So we're into time either on for injuries and in the First half, one lengthy stoppage when Rab Shannon took a ball full in the face. And an excellent first half as well, Jock. Both sets of players have really given us quite a cup tie to start with. And if I'm sure the second half, there's certainly one thing I'm sure of, there are more goals to come. I certainly can't see it staying at 1-1. It's a bad tackle on Malpass. Billy Dodds with the culprit. Well, a real striker's tackle. <laughs> Malpass looks... <laughs> unconcerned as he normally does I think that's, his temperament. that's about the kindest thing you can say about that tackle isn't it good striker's tackle it's always an excuse for getting away with it you know when you got to the referee you know Billy Dodd's probably saying sorry ref yeah, I'm not used to tackling people <laughs> I'll pass to the free kick that's possession once again McKinnon playing it in first time not quite what he intended the referee George Smith brings an excellent first half to an end. Dundee drawing first blood just before the half hour with a goal from Billy Dodds. But United striking back very quickly indeed with an equaliser six minutes from the end from Ray McKinnon. There's Billy Dodds who had such an impressive first half. So too did Ray McKinnon. They're the men who scored the goals in the first half. It's Dundee United 1, Dundee 1. Welcome back. Doesn't matter where in the world you watch a derby match. They're the same everywhere, aren't they? Harem scarum stuff, 110 miles an hour. Terrific match. Dundee United won. 
Dundee won. We'll have a look at the match facts and talk to Andy Gray. It's pretty evenly balanced, isn't it? Yes, it is, Richard. Surprisingly so, because it's really territorially, I think Dundee United have enjoyed the, the lion's share of the possession and of the pressure. But Dundee, to their credit, when they have come forward, have looked threatening. First piece of action that we've got to show you was when Albert Craig thumped the bar away down to our left here. He did appear to handle the ball as it came in, didn't he? As it comes in, I'm thinking, go on, Albert, head it. And really, it was a difficult, difficult ball to bring down. No doubt about it, the decision was correct. It was a handball, but for the life of me, can't believe he didn't just head that one in. Marker just stepped away from him for yes. some reason. Well, too. actually, to give credit to Albert Craig, he did pull behind his marker very, very well there and lost him totally, and then proceeded to do something that I would never have thought was possible, try and bring it down. Yes, I know, well, someone not too far away from me would have put his head on it, particularly at that ending. <laughs> well, that was better with my head than my feet, so maybe Albert Craig's the other way around. <laughs> but talking of feet, smashing opening goal for Dundee from for Billy Dund Dodds. Well, as we can see here, there's no real danger, is there, Richard? But look, what I'm saying about Freddie van der Hoorn's position, he should be the other side of Billy Dodds, because the one ball has caught them out, but let's give Billy Dodds credit, when he's got there, he's finished it quite superbly. And that was at the point when... Dundee United were just starting to take charge but you can see the determination there it's bouncing for him, lovely Alan Mayne comes out, tries to narrow the angle but with the ball bus sitting up there Billy Dodds has finished very, very well He's actually impressed me tonight, young Dodds he's, he's sharp, isn't he? He's got he's, an eye for he's goal, very, obviously. very sharp. He's, he's one of these players that's very small but with it very quick and causes defence's problems by being in and around their feet all the time I like him very much Goal came at a time just as United were beginning mm. to take control uh, they very nearly got back in it quickly as well, but for a, a wonderful save from Carson. We actually thought that uh, this had hit the post as it comes in. I think it's Duncan Ferguson. Again, look, he just pulls behind Willie Jameson. And we think it's hit the post, but Tom Carson gets a left hand to that. And that really, no matter where you are, Richard, that's a great save. Isn't it just? Uh, Ray McKinnon, you mentioned in commentary as being a player who's attracted a lot of attention from English clubs, got the equaliser. Yes, he has attracted quite a lot of attention, but this is a ploy they used throughout the first half. David Bowman getting over, Ferguson getting the touch, and that's what you want your midfield player to do. From a Dundee point of view, they'll be disappointed because you always tell defenders to defend the flick on. That's the most dangerous thing. Dundee haven't done that, McKinnon's made them pay for it. Dearly. And that, that appeared to be the Achilles heel as well. It was coming from a situation like that, wasn't it? You felt so, didn't you? I mean, they had threatened. I think O'Neill had two shots from similar situations that came very, very close to bringing United back into the game. And I don't think it was any surprise to anyone that United finally did get the equaliser. Can Dundee raise it beyond the levels that they've already peaked at? I, I think they're playing as well as they can, and that would be my one worry if I was Gordon Wallace. Uh, I would be hoping, I would be telling my team to defend with all the, the might they can, hopefully get a break and get another one in front. I do feel if United go one in front, that they could go on and win it quite handsomely. Um, but you never know in a cup tie. Gordon Wallace must be delighted with his team so far. They've done everything and more that, that he would have asked of them. Oh, yes. I, I don't think he can be critical, and I don't think he is being critical right at this moment in the dressing room. I think it will be geeing them up, saying, listen, we've matched them, they've had a lot of pressure, but we're 1-1. We've looked as dangerous as they have when we've got in near the box. Let's go for it. Again, he'll be expressing, there's no pressure on you boys. It's a cup tie. You know, our priority is promotion. But let's enjoy the game and show the punters that we're enjoying so it. So from United's point of view... They're under pressure. ...as obviously the favourites here tonight. Yes. What, what from their point of view to win it? I think to win it, uh, Jim McLean again, it's strange because I think both managers will be happy. Jim McLean will be furious. I know Jim very well. And he, he doesn't like bad defending. And I think he'll be furious with Freddie van der Hoorn about the goal. But I think the rest of United's play has been, has been very, very good, uh, position-wise. Defending, it was quite a whack in the face that Shannon got down there. Yeah. Uh, not dissimilar to the one that Jock Brown took today. Perhaps <laughs> he'll tell us about it a little bit later on. But a wonderful atmosphere inside the stadium here that you remember or was it it wasn't often like this uh, when I was here Richard because Dundee were the main force and uh, United were getting three and four thousand at their games so it wasn't often like this but I can remember when three and four thousand got together and started singing my name you know that was frightening at the time <laughs> it's frightening any time I hear your name I'll tell you <laughs> just over 16,000 in the stadium we're enjoying a rare old tussle Dundee United won Dundee won back here after the break Welcome back, Dundee United 1, Dundee 1, the teams are with us, we're about to restart, let's rejoin Andy and Jock Brown. 
So the second half of this tenant Scottish Cup quarter final is started by Dundee United. And there has been a tremendous buzz in the stadium through half time as both sets of supporters are reflected on the action in the first 45 minutes. And they're looking for more of the same in this period. It will be interesting to see what changes tactically may have been made by the managers to cope with the flow of play in the first half. Be very surprised, Jog, if, if either manager makes a tactical change at the moment. As I was saying to, to Richard at half time, I do feel that both managers will be happy the way things went in the first half. Well, there has been one significant change made by Dundee United. They've switched John O'Neill to the left flank. It looks as though they want to overload on the left because Ray McKinnon has stayed out in that area also. Well, Jim McLean is always the kind of manager who will come up with something unusual and something different, especially after the interval. Yes, it is strange to see that, Jock. I can't really understand why he's took John O'Neill wide on the right, wide on the left again, and left no one down here. Whether it means that John Clark is going to push forward into a more attacking role, and they're going to play three at the back using Morris Malpass as a spare defender, I don't know. But, I mean, Jim, you're right, does pull some hats out, some rabbits out the hat. Here's Ray McKinnon showing his two-footedness, taking this free kick right-footed. And a good header there by Ferguson. He gets up very well indeed, the tall young striker. Yes, he is very tall, Jock, and already this certainly first half caused him problems and really contributed to the equaliser. And that's the one thing that Dundee will have to be very careful about when the ball comes in the box, because he's shown already the staff that he's determined to win the ball. Bowman playing it back, there's Clark. Jackson's header, good running by Bowman. Testing the pace of Shannon. Good play indeed by Bowman. There's Ferguson trying a dummy to deceive Jimison. Clark loves it forward. Ferguson does well again in the air. Crave going up there with John O'Neill. And what a disappointment in the end for the young United forward. Yes, I don't think he just realised quite how much time he had there. So one goal apiece, Billy Dodds for Dundee with the opener and Ray McKinnon with the equaliser. In a stirring first half, there's Van der Haan running it back and Alan Main getting a touch early in the second half. Looking at the formation, Jock, just very quickly, it looks as if United may even be reverting to a 4-3-3 type formation because they are pushing John O'Neill right up front and playing with just the three in midfield. So that may be the change there. So, a throw to United. There's Ferguson. Jimison making a good pass to the left. Here's Sean McSkimming. Dodd sets off. Kubakovic is quick enough, though. And experienced enough to cope with that. A shake of the head there from Dodds. Not at all happy about the efforts of Kubakovic. 200,000 pounds, very well spent by Jim McLean for Pivakovic. There's Mark Crabe, the header by McInally. Tackle came from Clark. Andy Gray rising beside me here to try to head that back. Was it just quite high enough, Joe? So Rab Shannon will take this throw for Dundee. Lofted through the middle by Clark. Well, Mark Crave has been very sure-footed in the heart of that Dundee defence, a 21-year-old. Here's Clark again. A long chase across for Ferguson. Well, the tense opening minutes of this second half. Neither side prepared to take any chances. They really can't afford to go behind at this vital stage of the match. That's reflected by the tension which is evident 
out there on the field. Ralph Bass lofting it through the middle again. Headed away by Jimison. There's Bowman. He knew exactly where Jackson was. That's quick play by Jackson. Helped by McInally. Jovagovic playing it to the far post. In comes young John O'Neill. Well, certainly not renowned for his heading prowess, but willing to attack the ball. He's taking a blow above the right eye. He's actually got in the box quite often tonight and has been very unlucky. First half with a couple of shots. And here you can see again his determination to get in and cause problems. But the pattern, I'm I feel sure, is set already, Jock, and that United are going to push forward and, and keep Dundee under pressure. And Dundee will try and soak up that pressure and catch United on the break as they did so well with Billy Dodds in the first half. And McKinnon switching play to the right for John Clark. Excellent close control by the big fellow, and then he lets himself down with a pass. Frail getting help from Fraid. Well, the Dundee future appears to be in good hands with these young men, like Mark Fraid and Stephen Frail, Frank McMartin and Sean McSkimming. The header back by Malpass, who's playing more and more in the centre of the defence. Chisholm lost it forward. Well, while Dundee United have made that significant change, it appears as though Gordon Wallace, the Dundee manager, has decided to stay with the tactics laid down at the start of the match. Here's Duncan Ferguson. Back to Van der Hahn. Now Krivakovic. Van der Hahn. Well, the target again was Ferguson, but the pass wasn't accurate enough. Here's Don Darren Jackson. Very quick indeed, but he couldn't get the ball wide for John O'Neill. Well, it really is competitive there in the middle of the field. None of these players getting much space to exploit. Alan Diddy's throw. Helped on by Frail. O'Neill's head up. Played forward by McAnally. Good play from United. Played in short this time for Ferguson. It runs for Jackson. And the challenge was made by Shannon. Well, that was much more like Dundee United. What an attacking flurry. It was a good attacking flurry, Jock. And if I was Gordon Wallace, I would be very anxious that I would think I'd be very surprised. Jackson trying to turn by himself, that's a great save there by Tom Carson. Jackson can't believe it, it all the hard work to set himself for that shooting opportunity. Well, I was just about to say, you can't ask your team to defend for 45 minutes under constant pressure and hope to get away with that, you would have felt sure United would get one. And they almost do by a wonderful turn from Darren Jackson, but again, good goalkeeping from Tom Carson. Made himself big, didn't go too early, stayed on his feet. That was good goalkeeping. Darren Jackson's early time at Tannadise, marred by injury, taking some time to recover, but at his best this season. Oh, what a very tough exchange there in the middle of the field. Ray McKinnon going into that very tough tackle and conceding a free kick. I think it's more or less just there. He's beaten really by Alan Dinney and he just couldn't stop himself going into it. But he looks a very tough, uncompromising young character. Well, Ray McKinnon had his troubles at Tannadice earlier in the season, clashing with the manager Jim McLean and has returned recently to the fall. Jackson with enough pace, he's away from Craig. He to be eased off that. There's Jackson again. This must be the leading goal. Billy Dodds, anything you can do, I can do better. And it's his blistering pace that gives him the opportunity. Matt Cave just can't cope with it, but he shows great strength here. He may have gone down the drop, but he shows determination. I'm going to get up. It's not finished for him yet. 
great finish, but not unexpected at all. Well, a goal which has been threatened right from the start of the second half. Jackson appeared to be eased out of that, but look at the way he kept his eye on the ball, made that opportunity for himself, then showed that delightful touch to get away from Tom Carson and beat Brad Shannon to the loose ball. Looking at that again, Jock, I bet you Mark Craves thinking to himself, why didn't I just clear it? Because he did get to the ball first, he could have played it out for a corner or a throw-in, but decided to try and take the route back to his goalkeeper. And Darren Jackson's made him pay heavily for that. This is a real test for this Dundee side now, Jock. So Dundee coming forward with Chisholm. Here's Mike Skimming. Trying to go outside John Clark. Well, the big fellow is quick in the turn. And he made a very good tackle there. There's Mike Skimming. Turned away there by Clark. Well, after a rather shaky opening to the match, Dundee United have begun to look very impressive indeed, overcoming that setback, and the goal which appeared to come against the run of play, and Dodd scored. Back in front now. Dundee trying to reply quickly. A good leap by O'Neill. Craig judged it well, there's McInally. Free kick's been given. Body check there by Crave on McAnally, was it? No, it's an offside flag. It's a free kick to Dundee. Kovakovic getting up well. Kirin's clearing header. Chisholm doing well to find Mick Skimming. I mean, well out of his goal. Oh, that's the kind of goalkeeping which inspires confidence in his defence. And referee George Smith is going to have a word with Albert Craig. A little nudge on Maine after he made the catch. Well, Gordon Wallace will be very concerned now about the way this match is running. McKinnon trying to use O'Neill. The linesman's flag was up. The ball was out for a throw. Ray McKinnon, though, Andy, a young man, I think you're seeing perhaps the first time live, but looks very impressive indeed. Well, the more I see him, the more I'm not surprised that managers from south of the border have been up to look at him. And again, he's involved in a tackle. He shows great commitment, Jock, and doesn't shirk anything. He's very determined. Even here we can see it as he goes into the tackle. That's full of commitment, that tackle, using his whole body. So he made an early impression here at Tannadice. Going into the side a couple of years ago for the first time. And, well, a very difficult catch in the end for Alan Main at full stretch. He's made it difficult, Jock, because it's one of those easy, lazy balls that you've got all the time in the world and you want to look good, but he really gets underneath it. John Clark's header, there's Crabe. Bowman to Jackson. Jackson took the left foot of Mark Crave in the face. Well, it was a sore one, all right, for Jackson. Clearly accidental, though. Yeah, no, no deliberate intent here, Jock, as you can see as it goes up. Mark Crave's watching the ball. His eyes are on the ball all the time. Well, that's a nasty one. Well, that will do Darren Jackson no good at all. So a little bit of respite in this match. But to you this evening in association with Tenants Lager. And it looks as though Darren Jackson will welcome some of that at the moment. Yes, and with it, Rob Shannon getting a knock in the first half and Darren Jackson getting a knock in the head second half and you getting a knock in the head before the game. We're really having a fair share of knocks today, Joe. All happening to handsome people. <laughs> Van der Horn's free kick. Head out there by Ferguson. Jackson trying to control it, he's made a very good recovery. Here's Jim McAnally. Oh, good play there by Dodds, but the referee has given a free kick to United. Well, oh, Billy Dodds is incensed, doing so much good work in defence, but finding it coming to nothing. But just showing how keen he is to work for his team, Joe. not content to stay up front and look for goals. But you can see there, there's a little tug on Jim McAnally's jersey. And I think it's probably the initial little tug that the free kick was given for. So, pre 
free kick to United. Right across the far post. Headed across the face of the goal by Jackson. There's Malpass. McAnally. United now looking for what could turn out to be the killer goal. Played in by O'Neill. So here's Billy Dodds chasing again fiercely with Clark. Look at the strength of Clark as he comes out of that tight corner. Ferguson plays it across. He was fouled after the ball was released. And it's driven in by John O'Neill. But the referee, I think, may take some action off the ball. Well, no, he's quite content to let the play flow. Well, this is a crucial time for Dundee, Jock. United have really got them on their hack. There's certainly nothing wrong with Dundee's commitment in trying to win it back, but as you see here, it comes to Ferguson. He's caught very, very late. And this is good goalkeeping again by Tom Carson. But what Dundee have got to do, Jock, is hold on for the moment. You know, spend five or ten minutes defending, get a little bit of composure back, because they really mustn't lose another goal. You do feel if United go two ahead, then it certainly would be cuttings for Dundee. Sean Mix coming, trying to force his way forward on the left. So one hour of the match gone. United leading by two goals to one. Coming back from that early setback provided by Billy Dodds for Dundee. Goals from Ray McKinnon and Darren Jackson. But the fight is clearly still on. Dundee battling every inch of the way. But under pressure again as Malpass makes the run. He's away from Craig. Still trying to come forward and brought down in the end by Albert Craig. A well, good attacking play by the United skipper. Well, if Morris Malpass is criticised, it's perhaps for not doing this often enough. Oh, definitely. I think when you've got Morris Malpass's pace and his ability on the ball, then I'd be wanting to see him up in that type of area time and time again during the game job. Free kick taken by O'Neill. And Shannon at full stretch to turn that away for the corner kick. Well, it's a very difficult phase in the match for Dundee. They really are under the cosh at the moment. Tom Carson could turn out to be a key man. Played in by McKinnon. Punched away by Carson. There's Jim McAnally. What a very acrobatic effort there by John O'Neill. Well, he certainly looks to be one for the future also. Looking very lively tonight. and Probably had more chances and half chances than any other player on the pitch and this is another one he's very unlucky it's one of them if you get hold of it properly it can end up in top corner Shannon winning that from Jackson this is Sean McSkimming in goes Bowman there was no way past Shannon well, the Dundee fullback will be spoken to by referee Smith He's just beaten him for skill, really, on it, as it, as it was called the nutmegs in the game. And no, he couldn't get out of the way. So then the United had the free kick down below us with John Clark linking with Dave Bowman. There is by Chisholm, and that Dodds is taken from the rear by Krivakovic. Well, a more difficult conversation for George Smith. Prefer sign language with the Yugoslav. <laughs> How is his English job? Moderate, I think we'd say, Andy. <laughs> Amazing, with a Scot, a Dutchman, and a Yugoslav in the back four. They say communication's all important at the back, but then the United seem to be coping okay. So Shannon's free kick. There's Mick Skimming. Chisholm not controlling it quickly enough to play an accurate pass away. United really have taken a vice-like grip on this match in the second half, particularly in the middle of the field where McAnally and Bowman and McKinnon are running the game. I think they've got such a whole job. I would be very surprised if the scoreline stays like this for much longer, if Gordon Wallace doesn't think about making a change. He has got a very experienced Joe McBride and young 
uh, Dun Duncan Campbell on his bench. So he certainly can offer new ideas in an attacking mode. And if they don't get back into it, I won't be surprised to see them bring on someone. Two attacking players on the bench. There's Paul Sturrock coming out of his dugout. Stuart Hawke, the sprint coach also. But then you have John McBride who can operate wide on the left. Duncan Campbell who can operate wide on the right. So they could freshen things up. So there's John Blackley offering instructions there from the middle. Gordon Wallace looking somewhat perplexed at the moment. Helped on by Craig. This is Dodds. McInally turns it back. Well, Billy Dodds and Albert Craig really haven't had the chance to show their skills up front in the second half. They've been backtracking on United defenders for most of the time. Clearance by Craig. Dodds. This is Frail. Craig needs support. And once again, it's McInally who picks up the loose ball in midfield. Seems to be everywhere tonight, McInally. Over on the far side, John O'Neill has a chance to run at Dinny. So a throw to United. Dave Bowman going across to offer himself for the throw, but there will be a hold-up because Billy Dodds has gone down near the halfway line with what appears to be cramp. Well, he certainly has run himself into the ground so far in the match. And he's paying the penalty right now as Eric Ferguson, the physio, comes on. He's certainly been given his all for his team's cause tonight, Jock. Not only up front has he been very lively and very mobile, but he's been happy to track people back deep into his own half to help his, de his, help his defence out. That's a fine, young, fine sign for a young player. Well, I reckon the knee will not be very pleased about losing Dodds at this stage. The United fans, though, very happy indeed at this stage, in front and looking to be well in control. They may be mindful, though, of the fact that when Dindy scored in the first half, it was in a spell when United were on the ascendancy. Here's United's throw taken as McInerney picks it up. Links with Bowman. Ferguson's head on this Jackson. Good interchange up front there from United. Ferguson and Jackson together. There's Shannon. Van der Hearn leaning in there in front of Dodds. and he certainly look at this stage to be badly in need of some kind of inspiration on the field to turn the tide because United in this mood are notoriously difficult to come back against here's Malpass O'Neill has gone ahead on the left McKinnon has made an angle in the middle He's away from Frail and from Dinny Bundled from the rear by Frail. There's no free kick though. Stephen Frail nudging it back. The tackle came from McInally. Who else in midfield? Bowman's head up. There's Clark. Dinny to Chisholm. There's McMartin. Now Mick's giving his space on the left. It's closed down quickly by Bowman. This is Shannon. It's a measured build-up from Dundee. Now pass with the header. A oh, fine play again from Malpass. Surging forward more and more in the second half. And that's a careless pass, though. Most unlike Morris Malpass. But he has come forward more and more in this match, and that will be pleasing not only Jim McLean, but I reckon the Scotland manager, Dandy Rockstra. Rails head up. There's Van der Hoorn. Good determined play again by Dodds, making the angle well for the pass to Mick Skimming. Well, 
Sean McSkimming looking to the heavens there in despair about his clumsy touch which allowed Clark to make the tackle. Well, the movement which characterised the Dundee play early in the match has apparently disappeared at this stage in the game. A bit of frustration creeping in. The skipper Gordon Chisholm now with a vital role to play if he's to inspire his teammates to a late effort to save the tie. I think that's one reason why I do feel that Gordon Wallace should seriously be thinking of a change job. Because it's midfield four, I've had to work tremendously hard and I still haven't to work tremendously hard. In the, in the defensive way, then they are finding great difficulty in any of them getting in contact with the front two. Ferguson playing it on for Jackson. Well, that really is a very promising striking partnership. Darren Jackson, so quick and elusive and skillful. And the six foot three inch figure of Duncan Ferguson beside him. So 20 minutes of this tie remaining. And. This match brought to you in association with Tenants Lager. It's a match which has certainly been enjoyed by the big crowd at Tenedice tonight. Krivokovic to Clark, back it goes to Alan Main. So there's going to be some activity from the subs bench very shortly. So Duncan Campbell getting some instructions. Shannon plays it forward, the header by Craig. Clark leaning in ahead of Dodds. Now Billy Dodds certainly does appear to be handicapped by that little bout of cramp he sustained a few minutes ago. And the lashing the ball forward. Up goes Ferguson. Bounce misjudged by McKinnon. Well, Billy Dodds certainly seems to be limping very heavily indeed. I wonder how much longer he'll remain in the field well i think he'll want to remain that young man will want to remain on certainly if it's a only a touch of cramp jock he'll want to stay on if at all possible but there's one or two other of his teammates who are looking a little bit leg weary as well and this is no surprise we're just about to see a substitution and really no surprise job so the change being made is the withdrawal of sean mcskimming who is a more defensively minded midfield player wide to the left and the replacement there's a more attacking player, Duncan Campbell, who could make it into a front three for Dundee. He's very quick, 20 years old. Recruited from Jerviston Boys Club three years ago. There's John Clark with the throw. It does appear as though Dundee are switching to a three-man attack. There's Dodds. Trail going forward on the right, followed instantly by John O'Neill. Well, O'Neill has done a good job there for United. Right forward by McKinnon, there goes Jackson. Jimison, cool enough and experienced enough to cut that off. Shannon, in the middle of the field is McMartin. This is Chisholm. Good play from Dundee. This is Denny. Three waiting in the middle. Frail's cross. Bowman heading the ball away. And it'll be a throw to Dundee. Well, the, all the extra effort which Dundee have had to put into match United seems now to be taking its toll. In the late stages of the match where stamina is so important. Campbell back to McMartin. Jackson's layoff here's Ferguson. Help over on the far side in the form of John O'Neill. Looking to run at Dinny once again. Such a tricky player. That's good running by O'Neill. There's the header by Ferguson. And that should tie it up for Dundee United. Well, a goal which. Dundee United cannot be grudged. Certainly not, and no surprise again, Jock. 
now a very tired looking Dundee side. You see he's involved right away Ferguson. He plays it to O'Neill and starts to make his way like all tall strikers to the far post. John O'Neill thinks I'll deliver it there. The rest suck to you. And that's a good header. Tom Carson given no chance. But what's good about this cross shot is when you get to a certain angle, you can't look near post because defenders go and block it. Look at Mark Crave, he's in there blocking the near post. So it's good awareness on O'Neill's part to look to the back post where goalkeepers have got a long way to go to get across the goal and block it. Well, 19-year-old Duncan Ferguson's third goal of the season and he has made a very big impression in a short time in the Dundee United first team. But that was also a goal which demonstrated one aspect of John O'Neill's play which had not been so convincing earlier in the evening and that was the ability to cross an accurate ball. The free kick there to United. Stephen Frail showing his frustration with that tackle. Frustration and tiredness, I think, as well, Jock. He's worked very hard. What people don't realise that with the United having so much possession of the ball, that it's harder and it takes more out of your job when you have to chase the ball and get it off the other team. But the United will not have had to work so hard with having as much possession as they've had. And that's certainly taken its toll on this Dundee side. But they've matched the Dundee as much as they could. And uh, I'm sure Gordon Wallace will think there's bigger prizes for them still to go after yet this season. Here's Dave Bowman. McInally. A long chase there for O'Neill. Support for Denis from Frail. But once again, and the, the impact made by Jim McLean at halftime significant. That one tactical switch has certainly worked well for United. He's certainly probably in, in, in Scotland and in, possibly in Britain, the one manager who really does think about the game constantly, looking for little chinks in the team's armour that he's playing against. And again, the changes made at half time, moving O'Neill over to the left hand side, has brought him a reward with the third and crucial goal for Dundee United. So what can Dundee do about this? Their pride will be the major element which will keep them going. Duncan Ferguson will have enjoyed that goal in his first Dundee derby. There's a spring in the step of these United players at this stage of the match, which is missing from the Dundee players. Gordon Wallace knows that all right. There's Billy Dodds. Back from Mike Martin. Challenge, challenging. That's good play by Crave, stepping across the bows of Ferguson. Dodds looks for the return from Mike Martin. It's delivered quickly. And here's Willie Jimison. Mike Martin again. Over on the left. This is Shannon. Helped on well there by Chisholm, but there's an offside flag up against Frail and perhaps also Campbell. Well, it's most unfortunate for Dundee that that goal came before Duncan Campbell had any chance at all to make an impression on the proceedings. I know, and I'm taking my life in my hands, a no joke, by even suggesting there a few minutes ago that the game's over with. I think we saw only as far back as, as Monday night when West Ham were two up against Everton and we all felt the game was over. But uh, Everton got a goal back with only three minutes to go, and what a finish that gave us. And I'm sure that'll be in Dundee's mind that if they can get a goal back, then it may just be nerves that just affect Dundee United. So that's what they'll be hoping for at the moment. And they're certainly not giving in. A lot of pride at stake now, if nothing else. Professional pride for the boys in Royal Blue. Dark Blue. So across it goes for the throw to Dundee, the dark blue Dundee. Andy Gray's past history showing itself a little there. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> There's Van der Haan going across. So it's been a very quiet second half for Alan Main. So further activity on the benches this time from Dundee United. Billy McKinley appears to be ready for the fray. This is... Ferguson 
Off powerful play by Ferguson. There's Bowman. Interception. A good one by Shannon. Clark lofting it across the far side. I'm sure he was looking for Ferguson. It's O'Neill who's challenging for it. Jackson's return pass. Played across. Very dangerously there on the run by McKinnon. And it was turned away by Shannon for the corner. Now, Raymond McKinnon has taken corner kicks with both right foot and left foot with tremendous accuracy tonight. And that demonstrates a talent which is not common any longer. I think I was one of the few that had that talent and ability as well, Joe. There's McKinnon's corner. Jackson up at full stretch against Frail. Frail into space for Frail. Good play by Bowman. Turn pass just missed him out. This is Shannon. Dodds hustled all the way there by Krivokovic. United imposing themselves now on Dundee on every area of the field. And there's the kind of crazy goal which could turn things around it came off Albert Craig and Alan Main really must have had his heart in his mouth well it's quite incredible that your team is coasting to victory and your goalkeeper does something like this and this can so easily have ended up in the net drop I can't believe what Alan Main was thinking about there well he's relieved it alright Alan Main and a change has been made by United before the goal kick was taken, Billy McKinley has come on and he's replaced Raymond McKinnon, not John O'Neill. It's McKinnon who's gone off. A late change there by the United bench. It was number eight they had out initially, but a late change of mind. McKinnon has performed extremely well in the match. He gets a well-earned rest. He was a doubt before the match with a throat infection, Raymond McKinnon. So that reflects even more on his performance. I think that's where they've dominated Dundee far more than any other area, Jock, has been the midfield area where, where John O'Neill, Bowman, McAnally and McKinnon have really given Dundee a, a torrid time in there. That really must be soul-destroying for Dundee to see a player leaving the field and Billy McKinley coming on because he is one of the most promising midfield players in the country. He's already appeared in the Scottish international squad, although he hasn't had a cap yet. And he certainly is a very impressive young player. So back it goes to Van der Haan. And the difficulties experienced by United early in the match have disappeared into the distant past now. It's turned out in the end to be a performance by United which really puts them among the top contenders for the cup if they can maintain this kind of form look now to be sure to grace the semi-finals so the attendance tonight 16,228 a very healthy one indeed and creating a tremendous atmosphere inside the stadium I wonder what kind of bet you'd get this year Jock on Jim McLean and Brian Clough a cup double Competitions that have evaded both managers. Yes, Jim McLean's been in five finals with United. Without managing a victory. And he certainly looks as though he should only be one game away from another final. Dave Bowman will take this throw. There's Bowman again, controlled by Ferguson. Bowman to McAnally. Frill did well with the tackle. Clark to McKinley. Here's O'Neill. So free kick to United outside the penalty box. And he looking now, suddenly like a beaten side. That last ricochet from Albert Craig May have been their last chance of getting back into the match. Now United have the thundering power here of John Clark available. Billy McKinley too, and Mjordrak Ivanovic. 
could come forward. But it's left to Clark. Off the underside of the crossbar, there's Ferguson. Well, a grateful Tom Carson collects the ball, but John Clark couldn't come any closer to a free kick goal. Well, there was power, there was bend, it was dipping. Tom Carson enjoys good fortune here, though, as Ferguson comes in, thinks he's got his second, but the goalkeeper just rolls over and calmly collects it. But again, a little example of John Clark's power from that kind of distance. So Duncan Ferguson will feel a little bit disappointed that he wasn't able to head home the rebound. Got up well to the ball. So five minutes of the match remaining. And a task which, in all honesty, looks too tough for Dundee. Craig with a free kick. Passed on by Campbell. There's Dave Bowman. Chisholm lofts it back in. Here's a chance for Billy Dodds. Well, the finish was rather tired looking. I have the impression he'd have been a lot snappier in the first half. Yes, he does look a little bit leg weary there. It's a situation that Billy Dodge would love to have got himself in earlier, Jock, and I'm sure we would have seen him get it down and take John Clark on. He's just swung a tired leg at it. He'll get a very slight touch to that. There's Ferguson with Jimison. Jimison confident that the referee would give the goal kick, which he has done. Well, Willie Jimison was a tower of strength in that the knee defence in the first half, but he's found life much more difficult after the interval. Alley forward, there's Ferguson playing that across, and it's Shannon who gets there just too high for Jackson. So Tom Carson wasting no time with sending the ball forward. Billy Dodge flattened there by Clark. A free kick to Dundee. David and Goliath contest that. Here's Dodds again, screening the ball, looking for a shooting chance. Picking out Campbell on the left. Look how quickly Krivokovic got across. That was top-class defending by the Yugoslav international. There's Albert Craig. Mal pass, making certain the headed pass back with Ruth Allen main. Been a good performance from Dundee United tonight, tonight, Jock. Jim McLean, as I said before, and he said that he wouldn't be, he didn't think it'd be a game that you could pass the ball about. But his team have certainly passed the ball about very, very well. Gordon Wallace, he'll have learned a lot from his side tonight. He certainly have got plenty of fire and plenty of commitment in that team, and that will stand his team good stead and the push for promotion, which I'm sure is his priority. But it's been a very, very entertaining derby. Jordan Neal trying to turn away from Frail. And the United youngster is penalised. Free kick to Dundee. Now Jordan Neal's enjoying a very good spell of form in the United first team. Dodds and Clark both misjudged the high ball. Clark now sending it forward. Jackson is the major threat. Carson coming out of his penalty area. And McInally returns the ball instantly. So Shannon. Chisholm. There's Robert Martin rather playing it back. Throw taken by Rav Shannon. We're in the final minute of the match. The chanting you hear coming from the United fans who are now relishing the prospect of another Scottish Cup semi-final. 
And that certainly has been something of a happy hunting ground for the men from Paradise. Five successful semi-finals since 1974. Here's Jackson. Corner kick's been given. A chance now only for Dundee United to, with an even better complexion on the scoreline. Corner taken there by O'Neill. Back to Clark. O'Neill came back to remain onside. Intelligent play by the youngster. Not such a good cross though clearance by Shan here's Bowman he's been a very important player for United tonight so Freddie van der Hoorn will be a relieved United player it was his lapse which allowed Billy Dodd to put them D in front just on the half hour so in the end there has been no harm done the Dutchman will be relieved Ferguson getting in there behind Jimison. Ferguson finding a way to get the ball to McKinley. Oh, McKinley showing a lot of determination here. Setting up the chance for Ferguson. Another corner kick to United. Well, Dundee really are completely on the ropes. Dominated now in every phase of the game. John O'Neill right across the far post Jackson trying to get on the end of that he has the chance now to return the ball and the clearance there inside the penalty box ends the match for Dundee United Darren Jackson's goal turned the match United's way in the second half it was a brilliant piece of finishing he then had Duncan Ferguson there in not home John O'Neill's cross for the third killer goal. That's why these United players, or fans rather, are applauding so vehemently. It was an outstanding all-round performance from Dundee United after such spirited resistance from Dundee. There's the full-time score, Dundee United 3, Dundee 1. But for United, it's not only a victory in the Cup quarter-final, it's a suggestion that their form is really good for the vital matches ahead Andy. Well Jim McLean must be delighted with that performance. I know that we see Dundee in the first division this year not the Premier job but it doesn't matter that was a fine performance and I don't think Gordon Wallace can have any complaints at the end of the day he'll look back and think that's a pretty fair result for the amount of pressure that uh, United enjoyed and there's no finer time for Jim McLean's side to strike form from him than right now just before the semi-finals it must be nice for him and the Dundee United players to sit back now and let the other six teams involved in this and the quarter-finals fight it out to see who'll get there so United winning comfortably there by three goals to one one of the key goal scorers was Darren Jackson who's talking now to David Livingston Darren as Dundee Derby's go how did that rank yeah uh, probably one of the, the best staff we did um, we were all pretty dull last year because we only won one, but uh, I thought our performance was very good. Did you have any doubts about your ability to come back after Dundee going ahead? Uh, no, we, we knew we had to battle when they, they got a goal in front, it's hard to break them down, but I thought we done really well. Tell us about that goal of yours. Um, I just played, kept on running, uh, I got a touch, put it past the keeper and put it in. Any worries about the semis? No, um, it's, tonight was a hard game, so we have no worries for the semis. Do you really feel that this could be Jim McLean's year to win the cup? Yeah, definitely. What do the players say about that? Oh, we're confident that we can win the cup. No, no worry about who doing the cup, no? No, no, no way. Darren, thanks very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome back. Well, there's a happy chappy. 3 1 to the Tangerines. Totally impartial broadcaster, Richard. Totally <laughs> yeah, impartial. I've heard that so many times. But we were right, I think, at half time. Yeah. Dundee had peaked by then, hadn't they? Well, the second goal was crucial. I think if Dundee had got it, obviously that would have given him the, a little boost. But we felt if United got it, second half, that uh, they would go on and win quite comfortably. And I think that was the scenario we got. They went on and they won fairly comfortably. Yeah, let's have a look at the second goal. 
crucial comes, goal. Didn't he do well? Yes, it's his pace. I mean, he would trouble most players in, in any football with his pace, Jackson. But it's not only that, it's his determination, isn't it? To just be aware to knock it over, not go down. Many players may have been tempted to have gone over Tom Carson's arms there. But I wonder if young Mark Craig will want... Just look at this, Richard, when I say he wins the ball and he looks to pass it back. Just there, look. Yes. Got a break there. Jackson, didn't he? But then didn't he, he make the most of it? Oh, yes. He's probably not on penalties, Richard, otherwise you might have gone over there. Yes. <laughs> yes, he <laughs> and might he thought, I'm not letting anyone else have this goal. I've worked hard for it. But and he a, stuck it away a well. A wonderful appetite. He wanted to score that goal, didn't he? Oh, definitely. I mean, when it was launched there, you can see it's a type of one-on-one -on -one situation that Darren Jackson enjoys. I mean, if you've got pace like that as a striker, we saw Billy Dodds expose it in the first half against, against United, and Darren Jackson do it second half for United. It's the kind of things that strikers like that love to be involved in a, in a straight race. Dundee's best chance then was a situation not dissimilar to that that we saw in the first, when against the run of the play, they went ahead. Yes. Against the run of the play, if they were going to get back into it, it was then. Yes. But the third goal buried them. Third goal was a killer for them, yes, and and from then on it was it was just a matter of you felt how many were United going to get. But this was a good move. You see Duncan Ferguson, the big lad, right in the middle of your screen, has made the pass to, to John O'Neill out there. And look at him, he's ambling his way to the back post, isn't he? But what about this for awareness for the young kid? Gets his foot under it, puts it in the perfect area, saying to his strikers, go on. The reason it, that um, Duncan Ferguson wins the ball as well, if you look, is that he comes from a running jump, Richard. And I think it's Willie Jameson who's underneath him, is going from a standing jump. So Ferguson has clearly got the advantage, puts his head on it, and the goalkeeper's got no chance. You were right, it was a gorgeous, lovely lofted cross Great inviting the, 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 the goal on the far post. A couple of important first division scores in the English first division tonight. Coventry have beaten Luton by two goals to one. Vital relegation points. And Southampton have been held at home by Manchester United. That will change the shape of the bottom of the first division tonight. But let's talk more about the Scottish Cup. Jim has been there five times. <laughs> he's missed out on five occasions. Is this his year? Well, he certainly won't be worried about the semi-final because he's got a fine record in semi-finals. Um, is it his year? I mean, who knows? He's been there five times, come away empty-handed. I don't know if it would be too disappointed if he doesn't win it because lots of people are tying and winning the, the Scottish Cup of retirement <laughs> and I don't know whether Jim McLean's ready to retire yet but I think, I know the man, I, I was here as a very young kid and he's got a fierce determination to win everything he can it will annoy him greatly that he hasn't got his name on the Scottish Cup of and he, course. no matter what he says, he wants to win it and, and if he quits as the manager, he's German too isn't he? he can stay around <laughs> well, in whatever it, role he likes he really. can only quit, he can't be sacked <laughs> <That's right. laughs> let's have a look at the match facts I think they illustrate how much United were on top towards the end of the game. There they are. Yeah, I think that's Well, they right. tell their own story, it don't they? It was very close at half-time, wasn't it? I think four to three shots on target in United's favour. But you can see there, 12 to five at the end. It just was. They really did dominate the second half. Dundee weren't disgraced for all that. Not at all. Not at all. As I said, I think Gordon Wallace can have no complaints about the result. He's got bigger fish to fry this year. He wants promotion to come back up here. He'll have learned a lot from his team. He'll know how far he's got to come now because that's been a measure of how far they've got to come against this United side. But he'll, he'll be disappointed they've lost, but not unhappy in the manner that they lost because they fought, they were determined. They never stopped going, Richard. Mm. And, you know, he can take a lot of credit from that. I think you had Albert Craig in the sweep, didn't you? I did. I was so unlucky. He nearly pulled one back in an <laughs> extraordinary way. It was quite incredible. When, his it team, when your team are cruising, I mean, Alamein can do anything here. Oh. But like most goalkeepers, he has a blind spot for something there and look you can think is that going in oh no and here's john clark who we mentioned his power from free kicks in the first half i mean that's a tremendous free kick and it's duncan ferguson must think he's picking up the easiest of goals and tom carson he's played well all night he's he had, had a good goals. game hasn't he? he's had a good game and you would think and there's a, another dundee united thing that they do up here richard and that they have what's called the warm down. My warm down always involved getting stripped and getting into the bath as quick as possible. And getting into the bar very quickly <laughs> after that, I know. But I've actually never seen that before. The, the merits of that would be what? Well, they say that if you warm up as an athlete, then you should always warm your muscles down. You shouldn't go straight from being very, very hot, but you should you should cool them down and gradually work your way down. That's the, that's the general idea behind it. And not to just stop entirely straight after the game I must there say one that. or two clubs actually do it and when I was at Rangers I know Graham Soonis and Walter Smith had the players doing that for, for a while but it, eventually it faded out but you do you really it. want to do that at the end of 90 minutes graft I know Malcolm Allison at one stage at Manchester City had players in the gym at half time didn't he yeah. 
the thinking being much the same, but do, do you really want to do that at the end of a match? You're asking if I really wanted to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's rephrase that. Do most professionals really want to go through that? Um, no, I mean, I, not that I know of. I mean, obviously, lots of, most of the pros, I think tonight they'll be delighted to do that because they've won 3 1 in a local dab, and you see how friendly and, and how much fun they're having out there. And, and so they won't be minding that tonight. I think the time when it's difficult is when you've just been stuffed 3 or 4 1 and you're asked yeah. to go out and warm down. You don't want to show your face anywhere. I think the Don King look alike down there is Stuart Hogg, isn't it? The sprint coach. Yes, he I does play a big part in, in their training, uh, the sprint coach there. No, he's just there. There he is. Let's quickly nip back downstairs there to pitch level and have a word with Jim McLean, the Dundee United manager. He's with David Livingston. Jim, you're a very hard man to please. What did you think of that performance tonight? Well, it's not my type of football, but uh, I thought that if there were any aeroplanes about, they would have needed to ground them. But uh, at the end of the day, the result uh, justifies the way we played. I thought uh, over the piece, the better side won, uh, obviously. But it's always a difficult game. Uh, local derbies are very unpredictable. But the most important thing for us is getting through, and I thought that we thoroughly deserved to win over the 90 minutes. Looking ahead to the semis, do you have any preference about who you play? Well, the players have now got uh, 10 days before we've got a game, and let, let's just have a wee break. Uh, in the semi-finals, obviously, uh, it's very, very difficult games, no matter who you play. But uh, we'll take whoever comes out, but there always is preferences. Much has been made about your inability so far to win the Cup. Does that still play in your mind, even after that game tonight? I think that uh, more people, uh, or the media, make more of it than I do. Uh, in life, we're not all gifted to come out with everything we want in life. Few people do. And I'm very satisfied with what I've come out in uh, my football life. And there are better managers than me haven't won uh, every trophy. Uh, we, all, we all are greedy and we're all desperate to win everything. But at the end of the day, we've got to be uh, grateful in uh, what we get. And well I'm done. Well done tonight, Jim. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah, Jim McLean, nice he's got job. tangerine blood in him. <laughs> he, he winds down and, and smiles sometime after the match. At some stage, we'll get one from Jim. Uh, Celtic and Rangers, must tell you about that. Highlights. Sunday night, 8.15, as well as uh, all the other action in the Tenants Scottish Cup. Must join David Livingston for that. Enjoyed your trip? Very much so. It was great to, be, it was great to come back to town. I see lots of old friends that are still around the place. And uh, to see a wonderful game, it was wonderful entertainment. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Wasn't it just? We've talked about the quality of the FA Cup in England recently. What a wonderful match we had here tonight. Uh, Coventry 2, Luton 1, United 1-1. Brought to you this one in association with Tenants. See you next time out. Bye-bye.